So hello everybody and welcome back. It is Power Week and um, this time is for the Power BI Desktop Update July 2019. I'm a bit late because I was on holidays. Hello guys, before we start the video I need to say this. I recorded this video yesterday and I didn't have the Power BI July update installed so I installed it. And now that the Power BI team has released the August update, which was yesterday, I realized that I got the August update without knowing it. So when I think I'm reviewing the July update, I'm actually reviewing the July-August update. So in case you see features there from the August update, now you know. So what you're about to see is the July-August update instead. So just I just wanted to know so you don't get confused. Back to the video now. But um, I want to summarize the rest of the updates that are, I think, very important for you to know. And I think the most important one, of, or the coolest one of all the updates in July, is a bit hidden. I don't know if you've read it, but I need to show you. Amanda writes it here that the observer will notice that from now on, there is a single installer for Power BI. How cool is that? Okay, before you have a 32 bits or a 64 bits, so you will have to know which one you had you needed for your computer. And there was one installer per language. So this is the new single installer, and there is still one for each language until the September update, and then it's like gone. Okay. So this is what you will see with the different languages and then, yeah, you can download one or the other. Here is the single installer, which I think is fantastic. So this means that if you're a large organization and you have Power BI users everywhere, you don't have to worry about how to distribute all these updates. So, so really, really good. I am going to show you actually how... Uh, I have to change the language. So you download the new installer where you have everything which I, I definitely think that you should do that I'm opening just a second so you'll see where you can change the language now you don't need to have a specific Power BI language uh, file or installer you can just provide the same and tell your users instruct your users how to change the language so you'll go into file oh we'll talk about this in a second let's Remove that. As you can see, I have it in Spanish because I was testing it out before I made the video. So let's change it back to English. So we're going to go here to Options. Now this is in Spanish. Bear in mind. And then you'll go to uh, uh, Configuración Regional, so these regional settings. And then change it back to English. English, English. Where are you, my dear? English. Yeah, obviously, it's not in English. Uh, English. So then it, here it says use the same um, language for the model as you use for the application, which is English. And uh, this the here it is for Power Query, and it says which language do you want, and we want to have the same for the application. I accept, accept that. Oh, and here it's saying that you need to restart uh, Power BI. So now I have reset it to English. We're going to open it again and it should open in English, which is good. Very, very good. I don't know if you realize this, but this is great news, especially for large corporations. And also, you know, you're working through countries, so you don't need to have different installs for different languages. So here we have it. It is in English. Great. The next thing you're going to notice is this pop-up, introducing the new filter pane. The filter pane has been available for quite a while now, but now it is generally available. What does it mean? It means that they have developed it enough, so they believe that it's a feature that should be here to stay. And um, they give you an option to, you know, um, turn it on. You'll see this option for existing report. So this is an old report that you open. If you create a new report, it will come with the new filter pane, whether you like it or not. Um, so my advice here is turn it on. There's no escaping from it. So get used to it. And as soon as you get used to it and your users do, 
great. So turn it on. Now, if you're not ready just yet, what happens when you see here? Here's what you have to do. If you want to turn it on, just leave it at this, click got it, and then you're good to go. If you don't, just uncheck it, and then it will ask you every time you open an old report. Do you want to turn it on? Do you want to turn it on? So you have to turn it on. Just do it. But in case. So if by any, for any reason you click got it, but you change your mind, you don't want it, you go to file, options and settings, options, and then you go to report settings, and then you, there. So you click it on and click it to, you know, um, so if you unclick it, it you will go to all the experience. If you click it, it means that you'll get the new filter pane. So great. What else is on for the, um, for the updates? Uh, let me see. Uh, we talked about icon sets. We talked about the percent support. There are uh, data colors. If you're using, you can change the data colors if you're using this color plot. And there is an improvement in performance. Uh, so they, they have made a change. So this is how I understand it. You know, when you put a filter, for, for example, the drop down, uh, this works with relative date and drop down filters. So this is a great example. So what you see here is before this update, when you load the report, this filter would send a query to the model and say, hey, which country should I display? And then store that in memory. Not anymore. So this uh, filter or slicer would only update when you click on it. So good thing about this, the report will load faster Something that could happen is that the slicer is not as responsive as it is now. So test it out, give comments to the Power BI team as always if you think this was not a good idea. Okay. What else? The analytics, there is a new update for key influencers visuals. I have to do a video on that separately. So no point in here to talk about that. Aggregation is generally available and then some data connectivity and visualization. So the, basically those are the big ticket items for the July update. So which one is your favorite? For me, it has to be the installer. The icons, I'm, I'm still a little bit, I worry a little bit that they will be misused, but hopefully not. Anyhow, uh, let me know what your favorite uh, part of the update was, and I'll see you again on the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.